Mzansi. Larato Kanyako is currently going through the most, as I'm sure she has had to work extra harder to cement herself and build her brand away from the Bonang Mateba brand. Now, it doesn't help that this woman not only look alike, but they also have similar presenting styles, and both women have almost similar voices. Now, currently, Larato is at a tour with a Twitter blogger, Musa Kaula, after the blogger called Larato a Bonang light, meaning a watered down version of Bonang Mateba. Then he went on to to call her a bitch. Now, on an Instagram live, Lerato can be heard hurt and crying over being called a bitch by the blogger. Now, one thing is for sure, Lerato, a bitch you are, but a boss bitch rather. And it's not fair to pin these two women against each other as they have both achieved a lot in their own right. Now, let's look at how rich they are and what they've achieved, starting with Bonang Mataeba, known as Queen B to her fans. Hey, hey, Mzansi. Hello and welcome to Entertainment news Mzansi. if you're new to my channel you know you're here for the stories go ahead click the subscribe button and of course the bell and you'll never miss an update I'm Zansi. Bonang Mateba's net worth as of 2022. Bonang is a South African television presenter, radio personality, businesswoman, producer, model, and philanthropist. She is known for her flamboyant presenting skills and her signature voice. She presented the SBC One music show Live, now Live Amp, which built her spotlight in the industry. She is also known for being the first black South African to be featured on numerous magazines. In 2011, she became the first South African celebrity to launch an online reality show show called Be Dazzled. In 2013, she was the first international ambassador for the cosmetic brand Revlon outside the US. In 2014, she hosted the 2014 MTV Europe Music Awards pre-show, which made her become the first South African woman to host the pre-ceremony. And in 2015, she became the first African to be given an E! News Special Africa on E! Now, in 2016, she graced the cover of Forbes Woman Africa alongside three other women who were all given a headline for being the faces of entrepreneurship. She released her book From A to B and premiered her own reality show Bing Bonang, both in 2017. Now in 2018 she was featured on the power issue of GQSA for the September edition. Now Bonang Dorothy Mateba was born on June 25th, 1987 which would mean she's around age 34, 35 years old. Now in Mahikeng Borough of North Northwest. Her parents are Charlotte Mugwena, the Executive Vice President for Human Resources and Corporate Affairs of Sasol, and Gambi Mateba, a senior lecturer at Northwest University. She is of the Bantu-speaking ethnic group Tswana. Mateba has an older sister, Ria Betzwi, who made it to the top three of Miss International South Africa 2018. After her parents split, her mother remarried, giving birth to a son named Tabo, Bonang's half-brother. Now, this family relocated to Leondale in the east of Johannesburg while Bonang attended Four Ways High School, a prestigious government co-ed school in Four Ways, Johannesburg. Nabateba made her television debut on the SBC2 kids show Manhattan Fantasy Challenge while she was 15. She also appeared in other several SBC2 kids show. In 2007, Mateba auditioned for the inaugural season of the SBC1 music show Live, now Live Amp. After leaving Varsity, she was later crowned the winner of the show to co-host along Side, Tibo Touch. Her presenting duties were a huge success, and that's where her sobriquet, Queen B, was created. Her final episode was aired on 31 August 2012 as she announced she was leaving the show. After her depart from live, she hosted several other shows, including Clash of the Choirs SA, Afternoon Express, Top Billing, and KFC Taste Kitchen. Now, Bonang Mataba has hosted numerous awards shows and prominent events, notably being MTV Africa Music Awards in 2016, Miss South Africa in 2018, and hosted the pre-shows for the 2014 MTV, MTV Music Europe Awards and BT Awards in 2016. On December 2, 2018, Mateba co-hosted the Global Citizen Mandela 100 concert alongside comedian Trevor Noah, supermodel Naomi Campbell, and other notable public figures. In 
2008, Mateba made her debut drama role on the SBC One show Intersections, where she played Nurse C. Badi. As of 2019, Mateba starred and co-produced the documentary film Public Figure, which premiered on March 9 at Manchester Film Festival. Now, Mateba founded her production house called Bonang Mateba Entertainment in 2017. The production unit currently has one show, which is the One Magic Reality Show Bing Bonang, which focuses and showcases Mateba's daily life. In 2009, Mateba received a call from radio station YFM, in which she was told that she'll be added to the new lineup of presenters. She received her own weekend afternoon show called The Beehive, which was an instant success, mainly focusing on young listeners. She then left the radio show in 2014. Mataba was announced as a new radio DJ for, ra for radio station Metro FM in 2015. She replaced Sipogazi January, who became the new Metro FM veteran. Now, Mataba's slot show, The Front Row, had a great and joyful listenership until a dispute with the radio station's manager. After an on air reshuffle, that saw Bonang hosting the show alongside her rumored longtime industry rival, Lerato Khanyaho, without her notification arose. Outraged by their lack of communication, Bonang resigned from the radio station the next day. Now, in 2008, Mateba made a collaboration with retailer Legit in launching her first clothing line, Just Be. She then partnered with a London based designer to create a handbag collection called Baby Star in 2014. Her and a South African retail brand Woolworths revealed a collaboration with Bonang. They dropped a lingerie line, Distraction by Bonang, which is still ongoing, and new collections were introduced. Now, in 2018, Mateba, alongside Superbalist, dropped a collection of T-shirts named Bonang by Bonang Mateba. The T-shirt had famous Bonang quotes printed on them, including Mogel, give the people what they want, and hashtag I am Bonang. Now, on March 18, 2019, Mateba exclusively partnered with Woolworths in launching a range of luxury method cap classique called the House of B&G. The venture made her the first black woman to be added to the method cap classique association. Now, in 2013, she was named the ambassador of cosmetic brand Revlon in South Africa. The deal made her first international ambassador for the brand outside the United States. In October 2016, Mataba was unveiled as an ambassador for the vodka brand Siroc in Africa, alongside fashion designer David Glale, hip-hop artist Darles, and club DJ Dimples. Now, after a trip to Brazil in 2017, she was named the new African brand ambassador for Ipanema Sandals taking over Brazilian supermodel Giselle. It was later revealed that during her trip, she had taken meetings with Brazilian sandal makers and even shot an advertisement in Rio de Janeiro. In 2018, Mateba signed an endorsement deal with Cellular Network CELC, a deal that saw her partnering with them to also launch her own mobile app and emoji uh, pack called Bemoji. Other Bonang's endorsements include Peugeot, BRC Razors, Brutal Fruit, Diva Divine Hair, Lifestyle Pads, and a Couvercier. In 2020, Bonang was announced as Samsung South Africa's ambassador for the S20 range and the Z Flip. On June 7, 2017, Mateba released her autobiographical book from A to B, written through Blackbird's books, Tabiso Matlape. The book received negative publicity from the South African public, which many lambasting the book on social media regarding Regarding its litany of spelling, grammatical, grammatical and factional errors, the outcry led to the book being pulled from store shelves by book retailing giant exclusive book. It was later replaced with a second edition where many of the pre previous errors were corrected. Now, in 2012, Mateba dated record producer and disc jockey Euphonic. Euphonic was charged with assault after it surfaced that he physically assaulted her. She then dropped the charges after the couple reconciled. Now, as she dropped the charges, people had accusations that Mateba lied about the incident. Mateba refuted these claims, stating, I never anticipated how badly I would be treated when the story of my breakup was leaked. It was one of the most painful experiences and sometimes I'm not sure how I survived. A reference about him in her book from A to B. She then removed the reference in the second version of the book. Now, from late 2015 to 2017, Mateba dated rapper AKA. Their relationship was filled with controversy 
controversy as uh, they had an affair while aka was dating an impregnated disc jockey dj zintle who exposed their fling in august 2015 following uh, their split from zansi bonang mataba's net worth is estimated to be around seven million dollars however bonang mataba's net worth in rands is at estimated a hundred million south african rands her major source of income is generated from her career she is one of the richest celebrities in south africa bonang mataba is said to be richer than dj zintle as they are mostly of course compared to who is the richest so there you have it mzansi bonang mataba in her, in her own right now let's look at miss mother herself lerato khanyaho I'm tired of being bigger and better. I'm tired of being bigger and better. Lerato Kanyaho is a versatile actress, model, and media character, better known as LKG or Mother amongst her fans. Now, she has had to work extra hard in Zanzi in her career to prove to herself and to you that she is her own brand. As from the get-go in her media career, she was bullied and compared to the Queen Bee, standing strong. Even Sumizi, who is now amongst her good friends, was one of the bully leaders at the time, with Boy Titulo standing up for the Queen, Mother, the bitch the boss bitch served a television host at soweto tv gained the 2022 miss jam ali title miss soweto pergent in 2005 she rose to fame by hosting the lkg show later lerato kanyaho had presented the link the face of the sbc one lifestyle leisure in 2015 she hosted on radio metro fm now, Lerato Kanyaho's net worth is estimated to be around $3 million as of 2022, and that's around 17 million in rands. Now, this amount, Mzansi, is just an assumption based totally on her career portfolio. It could be way more. Now, she primarily earns from her television career and her enterprise. Nonetheless, Lerato Kanyaho is the proprietor of Black Angel, an event administration agency. She rejoined and has been co hosting Metro FM a front row. Moreover, Lerato Kanyaho at very least owns two to three swanky vehicles. Now, according to sources, she owns luxurious autos along with Mercedes Benzes and sleek looking Range Rover, Porsche and perhaps more. She is a lover of fast cars. Now, Lerato is married to Tamin Lela, a well-known South African businessman and entrepreneur. Brought into the limelight after she married Lerato Kanyaho, the couple tied the wedding knot in March 2020 but the separation within two months of their wedding ceremony which created an entire lot of drama in our online world now Tamin Lela belongs to a well-known family background as his father chief Joan Lala was a celebrated social activist in South Africa also a founding father of a charity group the Joan Lala Foundation named after his late dad nonetheless Tamin Lala started his enterprise collectively together with his umbrella agency known as Nlalayamandla Group of Companies Limited. Reportedly, Tami Lala proposed again to Lerato just a month after their breakup. Now, this 39-year-old Lerato Kanyaho was born to a mom and father on 22nd July 1982. Her family initially belongs to Soweto, South Africa. Lerato Kanyaho studied at Ipulugeng Primary School. Then she rejoined Boxberg High College for her extra analysis. Later, she attended Damlin College to test public relation and travel and tourism. Regarding her early career, Lerato Kanyako served for Qatar Airways as a flight attendant sooner than her modeling career. She owns a mansion in one of South Africa's luxury real estate suburbs in Santon. On Wednesday, April 2020, Lerato revealed one of her business ventures, which is manufacturing sanitary pads called Flutter by LKG. She also has an eyelash brand of the same name, which she launched in 2019. Now, this DJ is also dirt to mind to exercise her philanthropic ways by giving back to charities. 
She announced that her first batch would be given away to women and girls in need, especially in rural areas, for free. She also shared that her products are manufactured by a black female entrepreneur whose company is driven solely by black females. Now, so as you can hear for yourself, Mzansi, both women are heavyweight queens of their own castles. Both are thriving in their careers and it is doing them unjust by comparing them to one another. Now, in the spirit of fixing another woman's crown, a social media can see us losing great people by just a single nasty word. Inu Zumzansi would like to say, keep shining, girls. And Lerato, you are a bitch, darling. A boss bitch. Do leave your thoughts in the comment section. You know I love to hear from you. But for now, you know, I will bring you the updates hard. Just the way you like it.